In today's video, we're going to look at the difference between the English Staffordshire Bull Terrier and the American Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And other than the physical differences between the breeds, their temperament, uh, intelligence and grooming requirements are nearly identical. They are both considered to be extremely affectionate, loyal and intelligent breeds that really do well with children. So which breed is better? So stick around and we're going to find out. Welcome back to the Fenrir Staffy Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviorist, and I'm the founder and CEO here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Staffy, then how to become a high-level canine leader that can raise perfect Staffordshire Bull Terrier companions. So if you're a lifelong Staffy lover, just thinking about getting your first Staffy, then I promise you this channel is for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so you never miss a future staffy video. But let's dive into today's video and we'll take a look at the differences and similarities between these two gorgeous dogs. So let's talk about the history and the basic differences between the Staffy and the Amstaff. The English Staffordshire Bull Terrier was originally bred in England and very commonly used by the lower classes for blood sports. After the United Kingdom banned dogfighting here in 1835, the breed started to find new life as canine companions. The breed was then taken to America where their lines split and that's where the new breed was developed. Now, the American Staffordshire Bull Terrier is the descendant of that original English Staffy, but is typically four to five inches taller and around 20 or so pounds heavier than their English counterparts. The American Staffy has a, a longer face and muzzle compared to the English Staffy, which has that shorter, flatter face that they're really known for. Now, one note before we get started, because there is always some confusion around the differences between Amstaff and Pitbulls. Now, the American Staffordshire Bull Terrier is extremely similar to the American Pitbull Terrier. And other than their very high competition areas, many consider them to be essentially the same breed, even though they are registered as two distinct breeds by the Continental Kennel Club, the United Kennel Club. And the American Kennel Club doesn't recognize the American Pitbull Terrier as a registered registered breed, but does include the American Staffordshire Bull Terrier. So it is quite easy to understand why people can get so confused, but we're really going to be focusing down on these two, the English Staffordshire Bull Terrier and the American Staffordshire Bull Terrier, not the American Pit Bull Terrier. Now, unfortunately, the English Staffordshire Bull Terrier has a reputation here in the UK similar to the Pit Bull in America, but the American Staffy has mostly escaped those negative connotations. In some areas of the US, it's completely acceptable to have a Staffy where Pit Bulls are banned. The most important thing I want you to take away from this video is that aggressive and badly behaved dogs aren't born that way. It's through training and leadership, or more importantly, a lack of thereof that causes a dog to behave badly. And before I get on my high horse about that topic, let's move on and let's look at the differences finally between the English and American Staffordshire Bull Terrier. So both the English Staffy and the Amstaff are compact, agile dogs with high energy levels and a very tenacious spirit. They excel at athletic canine sports and can easily keep up with your active lifestyle when conditioned properly. Because of their size and agility, they are easy to travel with and don't take up much room in the home. Since the English Staffy is smaller, they obviously take up less space and are better suited to therefore smaller living situations, providing they still get enough time to exercise outdoors. Now, both breeds are considered to be very intelligent and easily trained by experienced handlers. They form very, very strong bonds with their canine leaders and are very eager to please them. They absolutely love having a job to do and love and thrive on consistent boundaries. They need to be socialized early and often throughout their lives with other people and animals, or they can, like all other breeds, become aggressive when meeting them. And due to that tenacious, tenacious nature, they are all always the best breed for first-time dog owners who haven't learned how to be calm, consistent canine leaders yet. Now, they do make wonderful family dogs, despite their ancestors' bloody histories, and in the past have been known as nanny dogs because of their patience, in particular with very small children. They are very devoted and gentle canine companions that do well with children of all ages. They're very close with their children and also very protective of them without being overly aggressive or possessive, more importantly, when socialized correctly. 
Now, they have short, sleek coats that should me shed minimally, but they do shed seasonally, slightly more like all other breeds. You may need to trim their nails on a regular basis to keep the sharp points really nice and ground down, but with any active lifestyle, their nails tend to file themselves fairly well. Both breeds can be a bit sensitive to their environment, and hives and other allergies that affect the skin are not in common with either breed. Sorry to quickly interrupt the video guys, but today's video is brought to you by our Perfect Puppy Program. It's the program that I've designed to take you on a 12 month journey to becoming a high level canine leader that can raise perfect canine companions with your brand new puppy. So if you want to go and check it out, more information, there's a link in the description box below. Tons of testimonials, but we'll get straight back to the video you were just watching. One of the most notable traits you'll see in both the Staffy and the Amstaff is their extremely loving and affectionate natures. They bond very closely with their family and they are fiercely loyal. They have a lot of patience for young children, like we've just mentioned, and are happiest when they are able to be with their families. Both breeds will spend hours cuddling with you and your children and prefer to be close to you at all times. Now, like I said earlier in this video, there are a very few differences between the English and American version of the Staffy, other than those few physical characteristics. Now, of course, I'm naturally biased towards the English Staffy since I've been around them far more and I grew up in Staffordshire, England, but I still believe that both breeds are wonderful canine companions when socialised well and don't deserve that negative reputation that they have in either country. So my biggest piece of advice is if you're dead set on a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, it's actually okay to decide, do you want the bigger one? Then maybe consider the Amstaff or would you rather the smaller one? then go with the English Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The differences are so slim that it doesn't really matter which way you go as long as you know that a Staffy is for you. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comment section below, and don't forget that if you are new here, we have two dedicated Staffy videos coming to this channel every single week. So make sure you subscribe and turn that notification bell because I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femrear Staffy Show.